Hi, my name is Joseph Connors, and you're about to watch a preview of my course, Orchestra Chops, Volume 2. Mozart 40 is probably the most athletic of all the excerpts in this course, not because of what the left hand is doing, like in the held Maiden, that's going up and down the fingerboard of the left hand, but because of what the right hand is doing and the high level of spiccato that is required to successfully play this excerpt. That, coupled with what is always expected of Mozart, the nuance and the phrasing, can make it very difficult. Hopefully, as we go through this lesson, we'll find ways to make approaching this excerpt easier and more successful at your next audition. The opening of Mozart 40, probably one of the most recognizable tunes, whether you've heard it on this, uh, as a piece at a concert hall or on a cell phone, um, hopefully we make it a little bit more musical than a cell phone. Uh, and that's exactly what I want to talk about, is the opening phrase of this. Two things. One, it's forte. And in this part of the music, it should be forte. I know some people are sometimes a little play, uh, afraid to play Mozart with a little edge. This can have a little bit of extra edge, um, given the context of the whole of the G minor symphony. Again, if you don't know that piece, highly recommend it. It's a great piece of music. So the phrasing. It's very easy to want to put an accent because the uppo, uppo disease is something all string players suffer from. Whether you are just beginning on your instrument or you're a little long in the tooth like myself. <laughs> uh, uppo disease is something we always fight. Uppo disease means as we play an uppo, we get louder simply because of the physics of our instrument. When you play an uppo, you get closer to the frog. The frog is closer to your hand. Your hand is where the weight comes from, and it's very natural to play louder going on an uppo. We want to try to avoid that, um, if at all, all possible. Now, having um, uh, a slight crescendo going to the B is OK, but we, what we don't want to do is hit, because that's not the correct style of Mozart. As a matter of fact, um, there is a uh, very well-known bass pedagogue in the United States named Paul Ellison, and he actually came up with words for this opening of Mozart's 40th uh, symphony excerpt. And the words are, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's a Mozart. For those of you who are familiar with Superman, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman is the, the commonly known phrase. But it's a bird, it's a plane, and it's a Mozart. I like this because the rhythm of those words and where you land on those words are how you should play this excerpt. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's a Mozart. I'll do that again. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's a Mozart. And that's what you want to think. So I'll do it slowly. And that is the phrasing you want to have. I have the good fortune of working with a lot of young people. I, I conduct a youth orchestra. And I'm always advocating for finding words or phrases in whatever language you speak that fit the phrase in the music. Because if not for notes, I believe the notes on the page are actually, in many ways, words. Sometimes they're, they, they, they mean something, and sometimes it's just the gesture of the words that bring about the affect or the feeling of the music that we're trying to play. So I would highly recommend, even if it's as a joke, it's something really hard to get out of your head. And I think I first heard that phrase about 20 years ago, and it still sticks with me today. <laughs> I choose to play the opening of this excerpt on the D string because the D string is a little richer in tone um, and ha have that warmth and the resonance of that, that deeper register kind of helps so it doesn't sound necessarily bright. Now, I know you can say it's the bass, it never sounds bright, but to, the bass, to a bass player's ear, it could sound particularly bright if it's... That's a, a personal decision. I'm sure there are many who can play it very successfully on the G string. Um, so again, I play this on the D string. I use uh, two and one. Um, two and one just allows my hand to be open to play the three with my uh, the three harmonic with my um, uh, third finger on the G harmonic. Uh, we one could actually that actually before two could possibly work too. But I I felt like I could control the quality of the decay, which is something we should talk about. The the third note of this excerpt, the B. 
can, can be played, and I've heard sometimes um, in many classes I've given, that, the, that there's a sustain. In previous um, lessons and courses, you've heard me talk about this decay. In Mozart, having that decay is the ambiance of the music. So we really want to focus on releasing the weight of the bow so that as we draw the bow, we aren't sustaining the same amount of weight. When we release that weight, we get a richness or an ambiance of the sound, so the sound doesn't sound um, stuck. So for me, the sound stuck. It doesn't have finesse. It doesn't have, it's not, it's not um, super special, it's actually quite plain. Versus, I'll actually try to stop using vibrato so I'm not gonna uh, enhance one versus the other. But you see, as I scoot the bow, when I say scoot the bow, I move the bow a little quicker after I've gotten the, the, the pitch of the note and I release the weight. So I get this. The students who study with me will know, will, um, know this as my comet effect. This is like the comet tail, the tail of a comet in the sky. And that's kind of the, the, my fake or false acoustic that you can create. I mean, you, if you do it for a long period of time, you can actually make, it, uh, make the room sound very resonant. And really draw the, the sound and color um, uh, to, yeah, make your instrument sound more resonant than it might be, particularly if you're in a dry room. So you want to get that release. But lastly, I'll say, you'll notice I'm playing more out in the bow versus close to the frog. The frog is the chunky part of the bow. If you're playing um, Heldenleben or the Mahler II, you'll play those fortissimos and um, uh, fortissimos right at the frog because that's where there's a lot of energy. To get finesse and um, just a little bit more liberty and freedom to start further out in the stick gives you more of that sound versus this. It's very hard to do it. One could do it, but it is very hard to do at the frog. So I would re really recommend doing this closer to the um, middle part of the bow. The next section of this are the eighth notes that go to the quarter notes. They're very similar to the opening where you have a slurred pair of eighths going to a quarter note. And in that way, they should sound exactly the same. So, and then you want to have the same, the same exact gesture. So these are slurred. And then that release. So. And something, and while doing that, I realize I haven't talked about even the overarching phrasing, which is in that it's a bird, it's a plane, it's a Mozart. That's one big phrase. So it's a bird, it's a plane, it's a Mozart. So there's direction. So you'll notice I'll, I'll do a crescendo as I play. And that's what you wanna, the gesture and the phrasing you wanna make when playing this excerpt at all times with that decay. It's really, really important. Thanks so much for watching. If you would like to learn more from me, check out the link below.